Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to begin deforming our sphere using noise to try and get it looking a little more planet-like. Now, completely random noise looks something like this, and is pretty much useless to us here. What we need is some sort of coherent noise where the values change smoothly from one point to another. To achieve this coherent noise, we'll be using an open source implementation of the simplex noise algorithm. You can download the file from the description. Okay, so I'll start by adding the noise script to the project. And then we're going to want to do some processing of the noise to get it to look the way we want. So I'm going to create a new c -sharp script, which I'll call the noise filter. I'll open that up. This won't inherit from mono behavior. And here we're going to want to create a noise object, which I'll just call noise. All right, we'll then have a public method returning a float called evaluate. So we'll take in a vector three for the point at which we're evaluating the noise. And then we can create a float noise value equal to noise dot evaluate, pass in the point we've been given. And now we can apply some sort of processing to this. So for now, I just want to take this value, which is in the range negative one to positive one and squish it to the value zero to one. So we can do that by just adding one and then putting that all in brackets and multiplying by a half. All right, I'll then just return that noise value. I'm now going to save this and go into the shape generator class. This is going to want to have a noise filter. I'll just call that noise filter. And I'll assign it in the constructor here, noise filter equal to new noise filter. All right, so now we can say float elevation is equal to noise filter dot evaluate at point on unit sphere. And then we can finally return point on unit sphere multiplied by the planet radius, multiplied, and in brackets, one plus the elevation. All right, let's save that, go into Unity, and I'll go onto the planet. And once this finishes compiling, I'll press generate planet. And you can see we've got this nice blobby thing in front of us. Now, currently we have no control over the shape beyond just the size of this here. So let's create a new c -sharp script called the noise settings. I'll open this up. This won't inherit from mono behavior. And then I want the values in this class to show up in the inspector. So I'll add the system.serializable attribute here. Okay, so we can now start defining some settings. I'll make a public float for the strength of the noise, set that to one by default. Then a public float for the roughness of the noise, set that to one as well. And let's have a public vector three for the center of the noise so we can move it around. We'll add some more things later, but for now I'm going to save that. Go into the shape settings, and the shape settings is going to have a public noise settings here. All right, and then the noise filter is going to have a noise settings. Just call that settings and we need a constructor to set that. Then over here, we can multiply the point by a settings.roughness, because the further apart the points are that we're sampling, the greater the difference between those values will be, and so we'll get a more rough terrain. Then we can just add settings.center on top of that, and finally we'll return the noise value multiplied by settings.strength. Okay, so I'll save that, go into shape generator. And here when we create the new noise filter, we'll need to pass in settings dot noise settings. And then we can save this and head back to Unity. Let's go into the planet object. And once this compiles, uh, we can go into the noise settings and play around with this. So I'll try changing the strength value. You can see what that does. We can increase the roughness. You see how we get a more detailed bumpy surface and moving the center around. You can see how this moves it along the x-axis, along the y-axis, and along through the z-axis. Now, with these settings alone, there's not that much that we can actually do, because if we want to get some sort of interesting shape, we need a fairly low roughness, but then there's not a lot of detail. And if we increase the roughness, then we can get a lot more detail, but we've lost our initial shape. To solve this, we're going to need multiple layers of noise, which all get added together to give us our final result. 
these layers will get increasingly detailed, which is to say the frequency of the noise will increase. How fast the frequency increases will depend on our roughness setting. Now, the higher the frequency of the noise, the less it should affect the overall shape of the planet. So with each layer, we'll decrease the amplitude of the noise. How fast the amplitude decreases will be controlled by a new setting called persistence. So I'm going to head back to the noise settings, and here I'm going to add a public int for the number of layers. I'll just set that to 1 by default, and I want to give this a range between 1 and, let's say, 8. Then I'll add a public float persistence, which I'll set equal to 0.5, which means that the amplitude will be halved with each layer. And then I also want to create a public float for the base roughness. I'll set that equal to 1. I'm going to increase the default value of roughness to 2. All right, so I'll save this, go into the noise filter, and here I'm just going to start by setting this noise value equal to zero, and then we can have float frequency equal to settings dot base roughness, and float amplitude equal to one. Then we'll do a for loop for want i equals zero, i less than settings dot number of layers i plus plus. You can say float v is equal to noise dot evaluate at the point multiplied by the frequency plus settings dot center and then noise value can get increased each time by v plus one times a half to get in the range uh, zero to one multiplied by the amplitude then with each iteration of the loop Frequency is going to get multiplied by settings.roughness and amplitude will be multiplied by settings.persistence. So this means that when roughness is a value greater than 1, the frequency will increase with each layer, and when persistence is a value less than 1, amplitude will decrease with each layer, which is how we want it. So Let's save this, go into Unity, go into the planet, uh, give this a minute to compile, and then let's try increasing the number of layers. I'll set this to maybe five, and then we can just play around with the roughness, base roughness, and uh, persistence values, and see what those will do. I'll maybe also just increase the resolution a little bit so that we can see the uh, planet a little better. All right, now I'd like to head back to the noise settings class, and in here I'm going to add a new public float called the min value. I'll save that and go to the noise filter, and here I'll say noise value is equal to the maximum value between zero and noise value minus that min value. Okay, so if we save that and go into Unity, you can see that this min value parameter allows us to essentially make the terrain recede into the base sphere of the planet. Now, what we have here looks fairly nice as some mountains, perhaps, but I want to try messing with the settings to get some large continents. So I'll maybe decrease the base roughness a little bit, and decrease the strength, and maybe uh, just play around with this min value a little bit. And so you can see here we've got some nice continent shapes. However, we've obviously lost those mountains from earlier, so it would be nice if we could define multiple noise settings and layer them on top of each other. So I'm going to go into the shape settings, and over here I'll create a new public class called noise layer, and this will hold a noise settings. Let's call that noise settings, and I think it would be nice if we could toggle the visibility of a single noise layer. So I'll also have a public bool enabled, which I'll set to true by default. Now this needs to show up in the inspector, so I'll have a system.serializable attribute here. And then instead of the single noise settings, we'll have an array of noise layers, and I'll call that noise layers. Alright, I'll save that go into the shape generator, 
And now instead of a single noise filter, we'll have a noise filter array, call that noise filters. And then we can set noise filters equal to a new noise filter array with a length of settings dot noise layers dot length. Okay, we then need a for loop to initialize all of those. So for i equals zero, i less than noise filters dot length, i plus plus. We'll say noise filters with an index of i is equal to a new noise filter. And we need to pass in the right noise settings. So that will be settings dot noise layers with an index of i dot noise settings. Okay. Now in the calculate point on planet method, let's start by setting the elevation to zero. And then we can loop through all the noise filters. So for into i equals zero, i less than noise filters dot length. We'll say elevation plus equals noise filters with an index of i dot evaluate point on unit sphere. All right, so I'll now save that and head into Unity. Wait a moment for this to compile, and we should see our noise layers popping up here. I'll give this a size of 2. All right, then in this first layer, I'll set up my continents. So I'll just make sure this is enabled. And uh, let's give this some values. So maybe four layers, a little bit of base roughness, a little bit of roughness, a bit of persistence, and I'll tweak the min value until we've got some decent looking shapes there. Maybe decrease the strength slightly. And let me just rotate this so we can get a look at it. I think that looks all right. So then I will disable this, which is not actually having an effect because I forgot to add that bit in the code. So we only want to add uh, this noise filter to the elevation if settings dot noise layers with an index of i is enabled, like so. All right, I'll save that, go back into Unity. And so now when this compiles, we should be able to toggle the visibility of this by enabling and disabling it like so. Okay, so I'm now going to enable the second layer and set up some mountainous terrain here. So I'll just give these some starting values, maybe a little bit more roughness and a lot less strength. And I'll increase the min value so that these are just poking out of the ocean. All right, I think something like that looks okay. So now I'll re-enable the first layer so we get our continents back. And let me just close this game window since we don't really need that. And uh, we can see this a little bit better then. I'm also just going to turn off this selection outline. All right, so we have our mountains and our continents together but it looks a little bit weird in places because sometimes the mountain is just sticking up right out of the sea or it's sort of overlapping the continent and then just going out into the sea on its own. So what I'd like to do is use that first layer as a mask for where the mountains are able to appear. So I'm going to go into the shape settings and I'm going to add another bool to this noise layer class, which will be whether or not the first layer should be used as a mask. Okay, so I'll save that and go to the shape generator. And outside the loop, we're going to want to store the value of the first layer so that it can be used as a mask for any of the subsequent layers. So I'll say float first layer value is equal to zero. And then we'll want to check if noise filters dot length is greater than zero. And if it is, then we can set first layer value equal to noise filters zero dot evaluate at point on unit sphere. And now that we're evaluating this first noise filter, it would be a waste to do it again in the loop. So I'll start the loop at i equal to one. And over here, I'll say if settings dot noise layers zero is enabled, then I'll just set the elevation to the first layer value. All right, now inside the loop, I'm going to create a float mask, the value of which will depend on whether or not the current noise layer is using the first layer as a mask. So if it is, then the mask will be equal to the first layer value. Otherwise, it will just be equal to one, which basically means there's no mask since we'll be multiplying this by the mask value. 
All right, so let's save that. And once this compiles, I'm going to set the second layer to use the first layer as a mask, and we should see the mountains mostly disappear. And now I will up the strength value, and we can see them growing out of the continents now. As you can see, if we shift the center of the mountain noise, they shrink as they head towards the ocean. All right, so I'm going to leave things here for now, but we'll keep working on it in the next episode. So until then, cheers.